what I mean by that is breaking down the walls that separate us. Amen. Because one of the things I've learned about God is he does not want to have anything in between us and him. And when you do that, that's the wall that we have created, not God. And just learning that, I had to learn that anything of if I feel like I'm by myself, if I feel like God is not with me, if I'm feeling those are my feelings, those are my walls that I put up because something that I have learned. But once you break down those walls, you don't have to, you get, you get to learn a new way. And like some of us all know that, like in the Corinth church where Paul was addressing them, he was talking about their head coverings because the, the women that did not wear a head covering, they were represented as a prostitute. <laughs> Amen. And so he went to the correct church and talked to them about, hey, put a covering over your head. Amen. But you can't say you can't say that somebody walking down the street, our custom is that that's not a prostitute if they don't have a head covering. So you can't apply that to today. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, it's, it's like that old story where um, a young daughter asked their mom, mom, why do we use this to cook with the with the chicken pot? Why do we? Why do we cut up the chicken and put it in this uh, in this little bitty pot? And I mean, in this big pot. And then she said, "Well, my my mama did it, so that's why we did it." But she got curious, like, "Why do we do this?" And so she called her mom, and her mom said, "She I said, why, why do we always cut these chickens up and put it in this uh, big pot?" And she's like, "I don't know. I did it because my grandma did." Yeah. And so she called her mom. And then that mom said, you know what, I don't know. So I went to the great-great-grandmother. And, and they said, great-great-grandma, why did you always cut this chicken up and put it in this pot? And she's like, oh, well, I, you know, back then I couldn't afford no big pot. So I had to cut it up and put it in this, this small pot. And all through the four generations, they was cutting up this chicken and putting it in this big, giant pot. And they did not know why because they didn't question. Yeah. Well, guess what? We got a big pot now, <laughs> man, and we cannot put those small thinkings into a, a, a big pot because God got so much in store for us. So he wants us to cook as much as we can, amen, amen. and we, he does not want us to get caught up in tradition, and, and even the words like holy, amen, we use these words because, you know, holy means that you, you look this way. Holy just means in the Bible, you're separated. You're set apart. <laughs> you know, I, I, was, I grew up in like the Walnut Park area, Dayton area. But the thing about it is as I was being raised up there, I was set apart from there. Amen. Amen. I was set apart. And even the kids would be like, something different about you. Something, something you ain't the same as, you know what I mean? And, and, and this is the thing, when you're watching CNN, when you're watching news, you're set apart. I guess I can myself. Man. You're set apart Amen. from coronavirus. Amen. You're set apart when you go to the hospital. You cannot look up all the stats and see what's going to happen to you. Yeah. Job, you know why, why, why the devil was so angry at Job? Because he was set apart. He had a hedge over his head. Yeah. And, the Bible, and the Bible says the devil was like, only reason why he worshiped you because you got a hedge of, see, he, he was set apart. And if you don't believe that you're set apart, then guess what? You're not believing that you have a divine life. Amen? Everybody say, I'm set apart. I'm set apart. From this evil world. <laughs> Amen. But like I said, it's just breaking down the walls of religions that help us to see clearer. And then Mark 7, 13 says, when we, when we do this, we're making the word of God of no effect through your traditions which you have handed down. And many such things you do. We do this in many categories where we just adopted a mentality and we don't even know why we're doing it. <laughs> and when he had called all the multitude to him, he said to them, hear who? Hear me. You know, one of my biggest pet peeves if somebody coming to me and said, well, when do somebody said this about you? What did I say? <laughs> did you have a conversation with me? See, a lot of people, they haven't had a conversation with God to see what he said. Oh, I got a flat tire today. What God, what are you telling me? 
You cannot see what God is telling you through a fat, flat tire. You cannot see what God is telling you through your checkbook. You cannot see what God is telling you through a fallen world. If you want to hear what God has to say to you, you must crack open the book and read the word and hear what he has to say for your life. How he calls you blameless. He calls you righteous. He calls Come on, man. He calls you just. He calls you without spot, without wrinkle, without sin. This is what he calls us. But no, we want to go with the world and see what they have to. <laughs> am I a high, am, am I a high value person? Who, who, who are you going to to get that definition? <laughs> you just, you just get one of these YouTubians to define who you are instead of having God define who you are. And because of it, we have a whole bunch of people walking around here jacked up, trying to seek somebody else's approval, trying to seek. Somebody else approval who the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So that means nobody can on this earth can give you value. Everybody has to drop the stones. Because as soon as you start saying this will make you this, guess what? That's where you fall in. And the Bible says when all man has fallen short of the glory of God, what that means, glory means doxa. In the Hebrew language, that means God's view and his opinion about how he thinks about you. When you stop thinking about God, about how he stopped thinking about you, that's when we go to the drugs and the alcohol and all that stuff. We have to cope with all these things because I don't feel good about myself. I'm sorry, man. I ain't, I ain't. I'm, I'm, Y'all got to pray for me today because... I don't have to lose consciousness to have a good time and drink myself to a stupor and drink myself to the point where I'm tearing up my kidney, I'm tearing up my body. I don't have to do that to have a good time because I don't have to lose consciousness because my reality is cool. Oh, amen, amen, amen. Okay. You don't have to adopt the world mentality to see who you are. You are who you are. And God loves you where you are. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's, let's break down one of the walls. How to pray your way to victory during hard times. You know, I was with a person I was Ubering yesterday and, and she wanted me to pray with her granddaughter and guess what? Her granddaughter actually did come off of life support. Amen? Amen. And she's like, okay, we gotta pray hard, hard. I was like, you don't have to pray hard. God already hears you. Well, we gotta, we gotta tear, we gotta keep on repeating what we said. We gotta keep on repeating. We got no, we don't have to do that either, man. See, you have to understand, you're not putting your petition to God like God don't know your situation. Woo, come on, that's good. And this is how I see people come to God like, if I say this enough, if I amp myself up enough, if I say the words over and over and over and over and over and over again, then God might. Hear me. No, that's not it. Or even if I yell, God may have no. Let's go to the word of God and see what he says about prayer. It says in Matthew 6, 6, it says, but when you pray, go into your what? Private. Your most, mm, that sounds like intimacy. Yeah. That sounds like in between you and God and nobody else. I mean, sometimes we pray at church, but guess what? Prayer is mostly between you and him. When the seed grows, I showed you that illustration. It's in the dust, it's in the dirt. Can nobody see the transformation of a seed? Because it's not, you know, the, the, the growth will not be televised. Ooh, that's good, that's good. That's good. I said growth will not be televised, y'all. You won't put, we, no, no, they don't supposed to see this. Close the door and go to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees what's done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not use meaningless repute, repetitions as the Gentiles do. For their, what they say? For they think they will be heard because there are many words. If I do it more, 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 
I'm a climb. I've heard people say, I'm a, I'm a climb my way up into the heavens of the heavens. No, no, you're not. No, God heard you once you. If you don't believe God heard you once you first said it, then you're in unbelief. Unbelief is more deadly than repetition of words. Amen? Amen. So do not be like them, praying as they do. For the Father knows what you need before you what? Before you even ask, he already knows. So what are we going for? <laughs> what are we going to talk to God? Somebody look up the word in their Google, prayer. And tell me what it says. What? Prayer? Prayer. Yeah, Google somebody, whoever the first person is. Let's read, let's read what, because I don't think we ever understand. Go ahead, brother. A solemn request for help or expression of thanks addressed to God for an object of worship. There you go. Did you hear that end part? An expression of what? Thanks. You let your you let your need be known, and guess what you do next? You tune in to his frequency. You know, one of my friends told me, hey, tune in to this. I'm going to say something on radio. I tuned in. I said, I don't even hear you. Oh, you're on the wrong station. You're on AM. I told you to put on FM. Some of us, they said, when do I be talking to God? But he don't say nothing back. No, he's saying something back. But you're on the wrong station. God's station is Thanksgiving. God's station is, will not you thank him for 70,000 breaths that you're going to take today? God's station is giving him praise for waking you up this morning. God's station is glorifying his name, not being around complainers. That's why the children of Israel could not walk into the promised land. Why? They got stuck on FM when they should have been on AM. Yeah. Yeah. And we wonder why God not talking to us. You can't hear him on the complaining network. You can't hear him on Fearmonger Network. Y'all yeah, let all your TV shows <laughs> that 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 is telling you news without the report of Christ. Yeah, I'm like, y'all just keep hearing these news, and you ain't gonna hear about the good report. You ain't got nothing to say all day, CNN, about the goodness of God. Not one. And rebuke me from telling you to get away from that mess. Stay on God's program. Because they, you can't hear nothing on that network. What network? I ain't got nothing. And because the way I look, and because I'm a short person, because I'm dark, because I'm this, because I'm that, because I'm... Listen, you will never get it. Because you've already excluded yourself. But if you say, you know what, if God be for me, who in the world can be against me? <laughs> I don't care if I got a disease. I don't care if I got five. I'm going to make it today. I'm going to succeed today. Why? Because if God be for me, who in the world can be against me? I don't give a care. See, this is, this is how you stay on the FM. This is how you stay on there. And it's going to be people. Guess what? If I go, if my car breaks down right now, if I go, man, this stupid car, and I kick the car with all my might, I will not have anybody in this world hardly in disagreement with me. But if I stand by that same car, I say, well, you know what? This car break down, but thank God I got here. Thank God he surprised me away. Thank God I will look crazy. Because <laughs> we live in a fallen world. I will look like someone. You, you, need, you need to check. You in the park somewhere. <laughs> that boy, he, he done lost it. No, I ain't, no, no, yeah, you know what, yeah, I have lost it. I've lost my mind, and I adopted the mind of Christ. And I've uh, adopted his mind, which says that I can't lose. You can't lose. Amen. Amen. Do you understand? You're a slave to righteousness. No, no matter what goes on in your life, it always going to come back for your good. Another frequency is of, of breaking down the religion is, Encourage one another what? Daily. I'm big on encouragement, y'all. And the reason why is this. This is a myth. <laughs> well, I married you 
didn't. I ain't got to say I love you every day. Uh, you remember when I did that for you two years ago? How you going to say that? Two years ago? No, I need a Janet Jackson. What have you been for me lately? Yeah, I said it. What? Listen, listen. You know what God has done for you lately? Take a deep breath. He's a constant gift. What have, what have you done for me lately, Lord? He's breathing through you right now, sustaining you. When you stop encouraging other people and yourself. See, this is the bar that we set. I said it one time, I ain't got to say it again. No. Listen, if I, I, me and Keisha bought a house 13 years ago. If I unkept it, if I, well, I changed gutters one time, I ain't got to change again. My gutters would collapse. My pipes would burst. My, my the, the, the house, you know the word condemn come from? Like a condemned house? Condemn does not mean somebody just spraying graffiti on your walls. Condemn means just leave it alone and watch what happens. It would break down. A lot of us, our marriages are broke down, our friendships are broke down, our, our, our selves are broke down because we don't encourage ourselves. Wake up in this morning and say, man, I thank God that I came to church. And I didn't listen to a lazy mind. Just, I could have just stayed in bed, watched a cartoon, and just chill. But I thank God. Hey, that's a, mm, I thank God I went to the gym. Mm, man, God, you're doing so many, encourage yourself. That's not a negative thing. Because King David did. He said he encouraged himself. Amen? Amen. Well, I said it one time. I ain't got to say it again. That's the reason why decay is happening. Let me just not change my, my, my oil no more. And it will, <laughs> my car will lock up. <clears throat> What's going on? Why? Because I'm not keeping it fluent. That's why I call my friends. Hey, man, I love you, bro. <laughs> hey, you know, I dab my boy Cedric up. Hey, bro, what's going on, man? I love you. I missed you. And when you live in the world of, I ain't got to say that, that's the world where you wonder why. Deception keeps in coming in. The Bible says, but encourage one another what? Daily. As long as it's called today. You know, God got jokes. <laughs> you ain't got to tell me today. You ain't got long. As long as it's called today, <laughs> encourage. <laughs> That's funny. So that none of you may be what? Hardened. Hardened. By the sins of... See, I ain't trying to let the devil in. That's why I ain't going to say nothing to you. No, you are letting the devil in because you're not saying nothing. You know, nothing equates devil too. I know the standard. You know, mama said if I ain't got nothing good to say. No, that, can we raise the frequency up now? <laughs> Stop living at that low level. I ain't mean to call your grandma wrong. But now, how about this? Okay, if I ain't got nothing good to say, I'm going to find something good to say. Amen. 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 I know that's the truth. That's why I took these little kids from Kennard Elementary and I was teaching them how to talk to one another because we've been groomed to Joan and to, and to, to find. They, they, they were Joan or detective. They could find a hole here, a hole there. They, oh, I said, all right, yeah, Joan. Oh, you know what? It was just going a thousand miles. Dirty old rusty old dude, look at your hat, look at your. I said, okay, good, good, stop, y'all. I said, now say something good to one another. I like how you run outside recess. <laughs> That's it. See, you've been trained to talk down, but you haven't been trained to lift up. And that's the problem. Oh, we can lift Jesus' name up. Help me lift Jesus higher. Jesus lives in you. He lives in me. He lives in us. So stop lifting in praise and start lifting in people. That's good. That's good. Come on. That's how deception. I don't know. I just feel a little weird, Pastor. I 
said, what have you been doing to lift yourself up? I ain't been doing nothing, but I just did a little work. <laughs> let, me, let me help you out. Let's go back to frequency. There's low, you see this? You think this is the same. No, it's not. There's a lower frequency that has dropped down to negative five, and there's a higher frequency. I've had police do like a, a, a detective test on me before. I've, listen, let me tell you something. When they say, okay, say this, and your heart is not in agreement, guess what happens? The stick goes, it goes down. When you say something that you know is true, well, what happens? It goes up. When God created this world from the spirit realm to the natural realm, there was a boom that happened. And it was all, if, if, if we had the meter, it would break it. <laughs> Anytime Jesus talked, it would go crack, 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 crack. We got to buy a new meter every time Jesus talked. Because his meter would go way over and above and beyond what we can even say and talk and think. So his meter is always cracking the scales. But we want to serve a God that's more than enough. And be just enough. Right. You're more than enough. Okay, good. I want you to be more than enough. No, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> if God can get it through you, he can get it to you. Oh, <laughs> That's good. That's yeah. good. Amen. So when God starts freaking on this frequency... You get up to that frequency. When God says, there's no way coronavirus is going to take you out of this universe. You don't go, oh, that's a cool thought, God. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I agree on. Amen. Don't stay on this one and God's talking up here. Yeah. Or you're not going to understand. That's good. That's good. What do you mean, Pastor? I'm, I'm, okay, I'm going to keep breaking it down like a fraction until I see you get it. <laughs> I could be here all day. When I was in school, we had the football table, we had the diva table, we had the, I don't even know what you want to call them guys, uh, uh, the dark age, we don't, you know, do the kick handbag thing, I don't know. <laughs> oh, the rock and roll table, I don't know what you want. Then we had, we had, and what happens is, if you go to a table and you don't understand the frequency, you go to another table. The divas could not understand the football players. The football players couldn't understand the rock and roll players. Because what happens is the table that you sit at, you understand the frequency of what you at. God says, sit at the table with me. I call you righteous, holy. I have set a table, a smorgasbord, just for you. So put on the mindset to understand that you're righteous. And when you do, you can understand what I say. When Peter was talking to the disciples, first they couldn't understand. But once Jesus died on the cross and came back, they had full clarity. Because they understood that you died for me. The frequency that God wants you is at a place where fear doesn't even live in your heart. Peter, walk on water. What? I'm not at that frequency yet, look. Walk on water. He started walking. Then guess what happened? He dialed into another station. Look at the storms. Look at the... I'm sinking. I'm sinking. Why? I dialed in somewhere else. Amen? Dial into God, because he only got good things to say to you. It's my last scripture. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Casting down what? Imagination. Imagination. And every high thought that exalts itself against the what? What is God's knowledge about you? <laughs> what did David say? Who is, who, is, who is man that you are mindful of me? God's knowledge of you is love. He made the sun, the, the, the trees, the, the beasts, and, and, and all these things. He said, it is good. It is good. It is good. And when he got to man, what did he say? Very good. It is very good. So when he says this, casting down a 
imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, what's the knowledge of God about us? That we are very what? So any thought that comes against you, not proclaiming that you're very good, guess what? It's a disobedient thought. See, we always look at disobedience as, I'm going to do what, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do, no. First, let's start with the thoughts. We are in disobedience if we are not entertaining what he says in anything else. Amen? And bring it into captivity. Have y'all seen Ghostbusters? <laughs> when they, <laughs> some of y'all too uh, young for that. They had the little uh, detective and they, they zap that thing and they bring it in. See, y'all got to bring that thought in. You know how I many people I've helped in this room that wanted to commit suicide? We had to bring that thought in. You know how I many people I helped that was dealing with anxiety and depression? We got to bring that thought in. You got to locate it. Speak about it. Yeah, that's where it's at. Okay, this is it. Let's get it. <laughs> y'all think I'm playing. I talk to myself all the time because I'd rather look crazy than actually lose my mind. And I don't care what nobody thinks. I know how to deal with thoughts. Man, I'm, I'm saying, you got nobody even call me today. I don't even feel like living. I don't, why am I even here for it? No, no. Uh-uh, oh, hold on. Why am I even here for it? You a liar, devil. I know what I'm here for. I'm here to set the captives free. And who the sun set free is free and deep. Get behind me, Satan. No, we going to write this thought down. We going to cast this thought out. We going to abuse this. We're going to rebuke this. I know I'm loved. I got a church family that love me. I got God that love me. I got... See, that's how you do it. Shut up and let him take all that. That's why he wearing your butt out. Day and night. Beating you up. And you wonder why I keep losing this fight. Because you got to dive on to that frequency. I'm sorry. Passiveness is not going to get it. I can't negotiate with the devil. Look, it's kind of like both of ours. Can, can I just, you know, dabble in this and that? No. You don't think, you don't, there's no negotiation with your righteousness. The first deal in dealing with the devil is you don't. So any thought that makes you feel like you're not a part of the family of God, what is the first thing Jesus taught the disciples how to pray? He started off saying what? Sorry. <laughs> I'm included. That's, he starts you out in inclusion. When Mary's about to get stoned from sleeping with a person and they caught them in the middle of the act, he said, no, 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 we ain't doing this. I'm including you, Mary. I'm including you, Zacchaeus. I'm including you, Peter, even though you're going to allow me. I'm including you. He's including me, even all the stuff I've done wrong. And let me tell you something, too, because I know how the devil talks. You know, I always talk about the domino story I got robbed. I always talk about my depression. Satan hates me to keep bringing it over and over, and over again. You know why? He wants me to stay stuck on stupid. He wants me to stay stuck on depression. Instead of meditating on God's word, you know, when we use the word meditate, this is the first thing I put in Google, meditate. This is the first brother that popped up. <laughs> this is not meditation, y'all. Meditation, I mean, this could be a form of, but this is, <laughs> Jesus became before Buddha. <laughs> uh -uh. Say it again. <laughs> meditation was a form way before Buddha even crossed the scenes. Meditation is what you're thinking about all day long. Amen? Amen. Some of us have meditate of how that person did us as a child every single day, every single night. Instead of meditating about the goodness of who God has been to us, we choose to meditate on the wrong things. Amen? Yeah. You know, I'm not crazy about meditation. Meditation is so powerful, y'all. Even this week, me and Keisha was thinking about this brother, this African brother that, you know, we was just thinking about this like three days ago. And he just popped on 
on the feed of Facebook. We ain't, we haven't we haven't even seen this brother, or heard from this brother in years. I was just thinking about one of my old friends, and I was like, yeah, he, one of my friends, Pumpkin man, he was me and him was real cool. And I was talking to Keisha about him, and we was saying, my friend Pumpkin called me. He hasn't reached out into me in 16 years. I said, bro, where you come from? I was, I said, you know what I said? I we was, I was like, we was just thinking about you. We just brought your name up. Now check this out. If you keep speaking about the devil, he will appear to you. <laughs> so watch what you put in the heart. And don't take my word for it. The Holy Scriptures has been saying this over 2,000 years to protect the issues of your what? What's in here? What's deep inside of your conscience? What's deep inside your heart? Meditate on the good things. And the good things will what? Branch out. Guess what? Effortlessly. <laughs> okay, I lied. That, was, that wasn't my last scripture. This is my last scripture. And then I'm done. And Joshua 1.8 says, The book of the law shall not depart from your what? But shall... But you shall read it and meditate on it, what? So that you may be careful to do everything according within all that is written in it. For then you will make your, uh-oh, hold on, I can't make myself do nothing. Then you will make your prosperity, uh, uh, then he will make uh, your way prosperous, and then you will be a success. Now, some people read this, and it is clipped at the end. Of, I'm going to do everything. No, no, no. You can't do everything if you don't keep meditating on everything. Out of the meditation is what causes you to do the right things. And the more you hold on to what his word says, that seed comes out of your heart. And it don't becomes, it don't get plucked out. Mom, well, how, how old was I when I was saying that? I was on the swings, and you was pushing me at the park. <laughs> I was like three years old one time. Everybody was three one time, right? <laughs> okay, I remember my mom was pushing me on the swing. My dad was, no, he was pushing me on the swing. My mom was doing some, some work for UPS and doing some paperwork. I was having such the, like the best time of my life at this one moment, three years old, right? And I came up, I hugged my mom, I hugged my dad. I said, I'm gonna remember this moment for the rest of my life. <laughs> and my parents said, boy, you ain't gonna remember nothing that you're three years old. Huh. And you know what? <laughs> I made it my <laughs> attention to remember this. And I remember waking my mom up the next day. You remember when you said I ain't gonna remember this? I remember it today. Four years old. Remember this? Five years old. Six years old. Thirty-nine years old. <laughs> you remember that, mama? <laughs> Guess what? This is the crazy part. I don't remember nothing else at three years old. It's what I focus on that expands. What are you saying, Pastor? You have to make the Word of God prominent in your life. Yeah. When I wake up, I only wake up to scriptures because I choose it. <laughs> That's all I know. Mm -hmm. See, we live in a world where the more information you get, the more safe you are. No. Sometimes you all are eating from the tree of good and evil. You don't supposed to eat from that tree. <laughs> you only supposed to eat from the tree. I mean, you are eating from the tree of just, I'm just going to know everything. Everything is time for you to know. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Some things are hidden from you because God wanted to be hidden from you, and you want to bite that apple, and you want to bite that fruit anyway. No! Some things God's trying, I'm trying to, I'm trying to scratch this from your memory so I can give you new memories. Oh, see, I'm not playing these games, y'all. I hear so many people that have come in here that are soldiers, that have seen people blown up right in front of their face. They can't heal thinking about that situation. Yeah. You have to change your frequency.
frequency to another frequency to walk into deliverance. I can't keep thinking about depression if I don't want to be there no more. You have to make a deliberate decision to unplug from selfishness, unplug from shame, unplug from guilt, unplug from anything that's making me feel more than what Jesus has called me to. And be okay with it. Because you know when you take it up to another level, you're going to look weird, right? You know that, right? <laughs> you're doing too much. No, you ain't doing enough. That's why we stay stuck. I remember me and my brother uh, Al, Anthony, we was riding out. <laughs> you remember that, bro? <laughs> we was riding out to this prison housing, uh, transitional house to talk to these people almost like an hour away from us. And we got stuck in the boonies. And my car flipped up on the side of the road. <laughs> and I ain't gonna lie, I'm the first one that had to talk like, man. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't preaching them today. Uh, let's call AAA. Let's get out of here, man. <laughs> get out this country time. But then there's another spirit of the road. It's like, nah, they come here to hear us. Let's go. And as soon as I said, let's go. Mm. See, you got to say, let's go first before the answer comes. We want the answer first. You got to just come into the agreements with the frequency of God first. Then the answers come later. Because the spirit is slower than the mind. Some of us want the answers to success. You're going to get it once you go. Just go. Just say, let's go, baby. Then guess what? Answers come after that. We want the baby, but we don't want the labor pain. That's the generation we live in. Because we're not farmers. We're not, we're not used to waiting. I can go to Popeye's right now. I ain't got to pluck no chicken. <laughs> so as soon as I said, let's go, ideals hit my mind, hit Al's mind, hit Anthony's mind. And I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's dig our way out this ditch. <laughs> but you use what you like? No. Okay, okay. You always with me in spirit, though. <laughs> but <laughs> we got under that car, and we start digging. We dig the tunnel under my car till, guess what? We seen the tire. And then guess what? We dig under the tire until we did enough with our hands where the tire was clear. And we put a couple of our mats under the tire. And then I said, all right, Anthony, hey, I want you to push me. <laughs> because we ain't got, I was gonna call Triple A, we ain't had no reception. Panic hit. All this stuff is hit now. It hits differently when you listen. When this thing ain't work, sometimes we look at this as the savior. Guess what? You gotta go up and dial in with the Holy Spirit saying. Amen. Sometimes we so in tune with this world, we don't even feel like we need God help. Because we've been so dependent on this. Put this thing down sometimes. Stop going down the wormhole for answers. And seek and hear for the answers. I say, hey, push, push. I hit that gas, and guess what? I shot up out of there. And guess what we did? We turned back around, went back up that mountain, <laughs> and we preached to those guys. I think about five people received Jesus Christ that day wow. as the Lord and Savior. Al, you was with me. Anthony was with me. And then after we broke bread, we fellowship, we hugged with one another as men. It was like 30 men there that needed this word. What happened if I would have entered into selfishness and said, forget y'all, I'm going home. That's how we think now. It's my foe and no more. That's why the church is dying. I don't care about nobody but me. That doesn't stay in tune with God. It's, it's a disconnect. God says, stay connected to me. If I tell you to give your last, you will have more than will be everlasting. I've never came up short giving to God. 
And what do you mean? I'm not talking about giving reckless. I have a person who's saying, I'm gonna give you my whole check. No, that's not what God wants. He wants consistency. <laughs> he wants somebody that has the understanding that it's a more blessed to give than to receive. Amen? Amen. Like I said, if he can get it through you, he can give it to you. All right, I'm done, man. Amen. I pray that you all receive that. Amen. Oh, Keisha, are we going to go into communion? All right. And like I said, uh,